I have already spoken many times about the shooting of the family of former Tsar Nicholas II on the night of July 16, 17, 1918, and about the circumstances of the tragedy itself, and about its immediate causes, and about the betrayal of the elite of the Russian Empire, which overthrew the monarchy. But this topic is almost inexhaustible, like any key event in our history. In the days of the current 105th anniversary of the tragedy, I want to focus on the fault of the emperor himself. Revolutionaries, the elite and objective historical circumstances can be blamed as much as you like, but often the victim himself indulges in his sad ending. Tsar Nicholas is the clearest example in this regard. I believe that he made his main fatal mistakes during the First World War, into which he dragged Russia in 1914 with goals and objectives incomprehensible to the people. The beginning of this war took place under the banner of the most rabid chauvinism, which resulted in a massive espionage campaign that descended on the Russian Empire. First of all, this hit numerous Russian Germans, they were often forced to change their surnames to Russian in order to avoid persecution and suspicion. It got to the point that even the name of the capital of the empire, St. Petersburg, seemed suspicious to the patriots. And the Tsar ordered that it be urgently renamed Petrograd. The espionage of those times resembled mass paranoia. She was strongly supported by the country's leadership. It got to the point that the Minister of War, Vladimir Sukhomlinov, was accused of working for the Germans, who allegedly did not prepare the army for war. The case of Colonel Sergei Myasadov, who served almost as an intermediary between the Germans and the traitor minister, was fabricated, which has been proven by all leading historians. As a result, the colonel was hanged and the minister was ignominiously dismissed. Obviously, references to the allegedly numerous German spies were the easiest way for both the Tsar and his entourage to explain the obvious failures of the empire's counterintelligence work, the defeat of the Russian army and their own helplessness. And that wasn't all. It is believed that the monstrous practice of collectively accusing entire nations of betrayal and their mass eviction originated during World War II, when the Americans drove all their compatriots of Japanese origin into concentration camps, and the Stalinist regime evicted a number of Caucasian nationalities to Siberia. But the first step in this direction was taken by the Tsarist government. One day, the commander of the Russian army, Grand Duke Nikolai Nikolaevich, decided that a large Jewish community living in the lands of western Belarus and Ukraine was secretly working for the enemy. At the end of November 1914, the prince issued a secret order authorizing the military to take Jewish hostages from among the local residents. If anyone from the Jewish community was caught in espionage and betrayal, the hostages would pay with their lives. And such people were really hanged without trial. Count Pavel Ignatiev, who worked in the counterintelligence of the Southwestern Front, later recalled that his department was literally inundated with denunciations of Jews. According to him, every Jew was treated as a spy, although 90% of the denunciations were ridiculous and useless. And in March 1915, after a heavy defeat and the beginning of the withdrawal of Russian troops, an order was given for the mass and total deportation of the Jewish population from the war zone. And if under Stalin the state was not only engaged in deportation, but also resettled immigrants to a new place of residence, then in this case hundreds of thousands of people were simply expelled from their homes, in fact, to the mercy of fate. As the famous historian of Russian emigration Georgi Katkov correctly noted, mass deportations became the most tragic consequence of the military campaign of 1915. The practice of scorched earth in a large area, conducted by the Stavka during the retreat of our troops, led to a certain disorganization of Russian life. By the way, this was also understood by some figures of the Tsarist government, who in their notes addressed to the emperor stressed that all this Jewish mass is extremely embittered and arrives in the areas of new settlement with a revolutionary attitude. But the king did nothing to prevent these outrages. And it is not surprising that many of the embittered Jewish immigrants then plunged headlong into the revolution. After all, the royal family itself has come under suspicion of espionage. It all started with the problem of Russian prisoners of war. I must say that both during the First World War and during the Great Patriotic War, the situation of our prisoners of war in German captivity was terrible, they were deprived of any help from their state. 
But if Stalin can still be justified in some way, the German Nazis simply refused to contact the Soviet government on the issue of prisoners, then the Tsar, who had ample opportunities to influence Germany through the Red Cross and other international organizations, is difficult to understand in this regard. Russian military historian Maxim Oskin said, Russian prisoners of war received practically no help from the Russian government. The rights of Russian prisoners in Germany were defended by the ambassador of neutral Spain, who often appealed to international organizations with requests for help to Russian prisoners, because the Russian authorities did not care about it. Do you know why such assistance was not provided? Because in the spring of 1915, Nicholas II decided that bread from Russia, sent to our prisoners, would allegedly be used to replenish food supplies for the German troops. Where the king got this information from, probably only he knew. However, one day the royal family tried to alleviate the fate of Russian prisoners of war, Empress Alexandra Fyodorovna created a committee in support of Russian prisoners of war. But the very idea of the committee to send food parcels to captured soldiers met fierce resistance from the Russian liberal and patriotic press, and isn't this a hidden form of secret food supplies to Germany, because the Tsar himself pointed this out? Moreover, they immediately remembered that the Empress was German by nationality. It must be said that liberals and patriots owned almost all the leading print media before the revolution. And it was there, and not at all in small Bolshevik newspapers, that the real persecution of the royal family unfolded, which was accused of all mortal sins, from the cohabitation of the Tsarina with Grishka Rasputin to family espionage in favor of Germany. The peak of harassment occurred at the end of 1916. The intention to conclude a separate peace with the Germans was actively attributed to the royal family, although the Tsar himself did not even think about such a thing. But the policy of national chauvinism with espionage, which was actually initiated by the monarch himself, has already got out of control. Moreover, even the generals of the Russian army, who conspired with liberal politicians to overthrow the monarchy, believed in the royal treason that occurred in February 1917 with the complete indifference of the masses. And in the summer of 1918, when the news of the execution of the royal family came, the masses did not stir at all. Foreign diplomats drew attention to this. For example, British consul Bruce Lockhart wrote in his diary that the message was received by the residents of Moscow with amazing indifference. German ambassador Karl von Bothmeier had a similar impression. The reaction of the people to the death of the Tsar is indifference. The people took the assassination of the Tsar with apathetic indifference. And former Tsarist Prime Minister Kokovtsev even noticed signs of some schadenfreude when he rode a tram through Petrograd on July 20. There was not even a shadow of sympathy or pity anywhere. The message was read aloud, mixed with antics, mocking, sarcastic, heartless remarks. They expressed themselves disgustingly, for example, it's about time. Or yes, Brother Romanov, he danced his own. Why is there such a reaction from a people who many centuries ago were considered monarchical? Most likely, the problem lies in the personality of the monarch himself, who by his behavior did everything to disappoint Russia.